All right, all right. Happy Wednesday, hump day. Everybody getting getting through the week, getting through the week. I'm just glad I'm in the week. <laughs> I hope everybody's having a great day out there. Um, so had someone on here this morning that, uh, well, I'll just say it, Bill and Susan. Bill actually came up with the word and sent it to us. Uh, and the word for today is flexible, flexible. Now, I could have went both ways with this because I'll be honest with you. If I were to lay on my back and stick my leg up there, you'd find out real quick I, I've lost my flexibility. You know, I remember as a player, you know, we stretched a lot. And somewhere between me playing and 44 years of age, I, I'm not as flexible, okay? Shame on me. But I didn't go that route, okay? I didn't go that route. Maybe that was a sore subject for me. I went on the route of ready and able to change so, to, so as to adapt to different circumstances. And I really got to say thank you for the word because it allowed me as I study to think about my life currently, okay? I don't know, Coach, you probably know you probably did the same thing. And, you know, in my current profession that some of you are involved with, some of you are not, we've been going through a lot of change. We've been going through a big merger. And, and, and I am extremely excited about it. But let me tell you, this word flexible is something that I, I, I should have studied before I went into it because I, I read two passages. One says, if you can't be flexible in life, you become irritable with life. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Think about that. If you don't become flexible in life, you become irritable with life. Well, I got to tell you, there's been times during this process I've become irritable because things hadn't went my way. There's been differences. I've had to change. I got to learn something new. It ain't the way it used to be. All that good stuff. And because of me resistant, being resistant to being flexible, it has allowed me to become irritable at times. <laughs> okay, so that passage meant a lot to me. There was another one. The measure of intelligence is the ability to change. I think about Coach Myra Miles and the University of Tennessee right now and COVID. You think they're having to change? You think they're having to adapt? You think they're having to be flexible? Big time program at the highest level, competing to win a national championship every year's or go going into it. The measure of intelligence is the ability to change. If you want to stay on top, you got to change. You got to adapt. You got to be flexible. And I really was talking to myself this morning when I was reading this. So I come across seven ways. I'm going to say them real quick. Seven ways to become more flexible. So think about this personally for you, like I did myself. Focus on your core value. Having key attributes that don't shift can keep you grounded during periods of change. Don't stray from your core values. And, 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 and I thought about that. I thought about the University of Tennessee coach, and I thought, you know what? Change, change, being, having to be flexible. But I guarantee you Coach Pruitt's going to keep the culture the same. His whole goal is, hey, my core value is my, cult, my culture in my, in, 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 my thing, in, in my organization, and I'm going to keep the culture the same. And, and I thought about that. Number two, be open-minded. You know, there's some things out there called different perspectives. And a lot of times I don't like to listen to them because <laughs> I think my way is the best. Especially if you a personality, man, we, we think our stuff's the best. And when somebody else comes in with a little different perspective, it's kind of, I raise that, eye, oh, that wrinkle in my forehead goes up like, hmm, I don't know about that. I got to be open-minded in order to grow and be flexible. Number three, develop new skill sets. Man, with this, with this merger we've been a part of, I've had to develop new skill sets. Do you realize in 2011, I didn't have a Facebook account? 
I think about that. I saw a change in, in, in our world to where we could get out information. We could educate people. We could motivate people. We could, we could grow a community on social media if we did it the right way. And so in 2000, not sorry, 2013, I didn't have a Facebook, but I decided to create one. Today, I've, 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 I've met so many people because I learned a new skill set. Number four, be optimistic. Bill, we got to find a, the bright side to things instead of always trying to figure out why it's not going to work. We got to sometimes be optimistic to be flexible. We got to, it keeps our vision for where we're headed. Number five, stay calm. Stay calm. I think about that when I'm calm. I stay more focused. Would you agree with that? Number six, plan ahead. I stay organized and I got to stay plugged in. Coach Meyer Miles talking about that today. You want to succeed in whatever you're doing, plug in, plug in. Don't detach yourself. And then the last one, you got to have a strong support circle. Got to to stay flexible, to be able to be flexible, you've got to have a strong support circle. And what happens when you do that is you know you got each other's back. And it, you know you're building trust, right? That's what this community's done for me. But what about in your, your profession, right? If you're going through change, you got to be flexible. Find that support group that you can have their back and they can have your back. You're going to build huge trust and you're going, to, you're going to secure that strong support circle. So that was my seven steps to helping you be more flexible in whatever it is you're trying to do to grow. Coach, I'll turn it to you. All right. Appreciate that, Coach Palmer. Uh, I, I'm going to add a few more things to what he said, but I'm going to start with, first of all, Bill, thank you for the word. Again, it, it really forced me to uh, dig in and think a little bit differently than I normally do because – like Coach Palmer, when I first heard the word was flexible, I thought, dear Lord in heaven, I am the most unflexible human right now and used to be the most flexible human. That's why I got sciatica problems and all that kind of stuff. So I immediately went to that. So there are many ways uh, that are or are not you consider flexible, like the stretching benefit. Of course, it helps decrease injury. It helps us build strength in our bodies if we're flexible and doing our stretching. Uh, but, you know, obviously I went to the other place in my mindset this morning and working on this is we got to be flexible in the workplace. You know, three things that came to mind for me is we got to be willing to meet others halfway. You know, and like Coach Palmer said, there's times that I go into meetings and there's times that I'm dealing with kids or adults. And I mean, I just, man, this is, I know I'm right. You know, and I just know this is it. And it, it takes me, I know my first job. I thought I was the best thing since sliced bread, knew everything. I found out I didn't know hardly anything. But I learned that when you meet others halfway, the flexibility opens you up to learn more and to become better. You know, you gotta think creatively. You have to encourage your team to encourage different ways to accomplish things. And to me, what that said was, Myra, don't micromanage. Don't try to micromanage. Encourage people to be creative in how they're thinking. You know, another thing is we've got to embrace uncertainty. Now, I know some people on here are probably thinking, now, Myra, you've lost your mind. But you have to be able to embrace uncertainty because we have to look for new ways to do things. And there's always uncertainty out there. So like a workout in a gym, there's a right and wrong way to build flexibility in the workplace. And a careful plan is always the right way. You know, I have a question for you before I wrap up. Are you flexible? Think about this. Are you flexible in a crisis and are you flexible in good times? That's two completely different ends of the spectrum, but we should be able to say, yes, we are in both areas, but if we're honest, we're probably not. 
all the time. You know, here are a few more ways that I think can help us be more flexible. You know, we again have to tune in to our groups and our circle, as Coach Palmer said, we have to be able to tune into them and what their needs are. We have to get out of our comfort zone, go for that variety. And that's hard for me sometimes. As much as I look at myself as a progressive thinker, it's hard for me sometimes to look at a variety when I've been so used to doing things a certain way. This is the thing that I have to work on every day. Listen, listen more. If you wanna become a very flexible person in the workplace, you've got to be a great listener. You know, a lot of people I used to say to my players and in staff meetings with my coaches is, you may hear me, but you're not listening to me. So listen, it's a big difference in those two things. Always consider the bigger picture, always. Again, let's don't get stuck in our ways. Always consider the bigger picture. Always accept multiple perspectives. Everybody on this group has an opinion on something. I want to say I'm gonna be acceptable of whatever your perspective is. That makes me a better person, makes me a better listener. It makes us better as a whole. To wrap it up, flexibility and adaptability, it, it, it isn't a part of success. Guys, it's a part of life. It's a part of life. It will take us time, but patience and effort, and in the end, it will all work out. Time, patience, effort and it will work out. The flexibility will be there. So Bill, thank you so much for your word. Uh, I think that we gave you several different tips on how we can all be flexible. And I know one thing, I've got to work a little harder on being flexible in a lot of ways. Coach, thank you so much. I do too. And, and one of the things that Coach brought out that, that really hit home to me was, was uh, listen, you know? Uh, one of my greatest mentors in the world told me one time, he said, you got to first seek to understand before being understood. And that takes a lot of listening. And uh, I'm reminding myself this morning, a lot of times I try to put out things and fires and go, 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 go. Sometimes I might not stop and listen to understand before I jump in and try to be understood. So uh, thank you, Coach, for that. That meant a lot to me today. Bill, thank you. Love you and Susan. Thank you so much. We'll see you in Arkansas this weekend. Yeah.